A big challenge for network engineers is to find the right network monitoring tool to manage your network devices. You're probably using a different network monitoring tool to manage your switches, a different one to manage your routers, to manage your firewalls, to manage your wireless LAN controllers. And you wish there was just a single tool that you could use to manage all of these different devices. And actually, there is, and it's from Cisco, and it's Cisco Prime Infrastructure. So Cisco Prime Infrastructure is a network monitoring solution that essentially allows you to gather all of this information from these different network devices, Cisco Catalyst, Cisco Nexus, uh, ISR routers, ASR routers, firewalls, even Cisco ASA still supported. And you're able to manage all of these network devices just on a single place. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, import into VMware Workstation so that you can start playing with this network monitoring tool. Okay, sounds fun. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go to Cisco website and click on downloads. So that's where we're going to download Cisco Prime image. And here you want to search for Cisco Prime infrastructure. And I'm going to select the version 3.10. That's the latest at the time of this recording. And here we're going to select Prime Infrastructure Software and we're going to download the OVA file. So that should be this one, okay? Okay, the download is complete. So now I'm going to import Cisco Prime into VMware Workstation. So I'm going to accept the terms to use this image. So I'll click on next. And here I'm going to type the path where I want this image to be imported to. Now on deployment options, I'm going to select Express because uh, it will take only these resources. So uh, four CPUs, 12 gig of RAM and six gig for hard disk. OK, so click on import and you start the import process. Okay, The import process is completed. So now let's power on this virtual machine. And here we're going to select the first option. OK, and here we're going to type setup. And first, we're going to provide the host name. So I'm going to name this as Cisco Prime 3.10. And I can only use hyphen. OK, no problem. So just Prime 3, just Cisco Prime. OK, just Cisco Prime. And the IP address, yes, can be this one. So you have to send an IP address that you're able to manage it remotely. So I have DHCP enabled on this interface. I'm going to leave as it is the network mask, the gateway. So it's going to be 192.168.43 and just one. Uh, I'm going to leave local domain and name server to be the same. Nope, I don't want to add another one. NTP, I'm just going to set to be the default gateway as well. I don't want to add another NTP. The time zone, I'm just going to change to my time zone, Europe, Lisbon. And do I want to change the clock? Uh, yeah. And so I uh, know it should be 2024.05. Uh, 11. And the time should be 20. Zero, and let's see. Also seconds. Zero. Okay. So this is done. So the username will be admin. I'm going to set the password. I'm going to set the password again. Okay, is it going to be used as an HA? No, it's not. Uh, do you want to allow root shell? Yes, I want. Okay, so now I'm going to set the root passwords. Uh, and again, apply these settings. Yes. And now it's going to take a while to validate all of these settings and start the installation process that might take around 30 to 40 minutes depending on your host uh, capabilities now in case your gateway is unreachable you might skip this step so if you want to retry just type n and it's going to continue okay the installation is completed so now let's log in to cisco prime and the username for the web interface is root and here I'm going to use my password. Okay. And this is Cisco Prime infrastructure. Now it's going to show this message at the beginning. So just going to click do not show on startup and click 
okay okay this is the initial dashboard okay this is the initial dashboard and as you can see uh, right now it's empty okay so let's start adding some devices here so if we go to navigation uh inventory network devices okay let's add a network device and there are different ways to discover or to add network devices into cisco prime uh, we can use the ip address we can use the name and we also uh, can use credentials uh, like snmp uh, telnet or ssh and http or https depending on the type of device the thing is uh, the more options you have available the more cisco prime will be able to get from the device okay so in my case uh i have a switch catalyst so it has the ip 6843212 and so let's go to snmp i've already configured the snmp settings on the switch i'm going to show you in a minute so let's just uh fill this right now so that should be ccie 65745 read only and ccie 65745 read only and the right community should be ccie 65745 right and ccie ccie 65745 right okay now i also enabled uh ssh on the switch so i'm going to change to ssh and the username should be admin now the password and probably I have to confirm the password. Okay, and if I verify the credentials. Okay, and it was successfully verified. So now let's add this. And so it will start the process of uh, syncing uh, the information that it get from the device into Cisco Prime infrastructure. And if we refresh this, should see it will start gathering uh information from the device so now it has the ip address right now it's unmanaged and if we refresh again it should update to a complete status okay and the switch was successfully added and you can see uh it has the device name it found the ip address and device type and the inventory collection status is completed okay let's add another one i have a router so I add a device and it is a csr router so its ip address should be 192.43214 and snmp credentials so let's type that's read only again and on the right community okay just verify the credentials okay successfully verified and i also enabled ssh on this router so i'm going to change to ssh and the user should be admin and i want to confirm the password okay now we can verify the credentials as well okay and we can add the router okay and the router was successfully added as well and you can see this is a csr that's its ip address and i can have some information about this uh like uh for how long it's been up uh the last time it was configured and the neighbors so we're going to dive deeper into this in a minute so let's add one final device just to show you that we can manage different devices uh, let's add a wireless LAN controller so I'm going to add device and its ip address should be 192.168.43.27 okay and snmp credentials they should be uh pcie five okay let me type this again actually it's different oh, i have caps enabled and the right community okay and just verify the credentials you want to make sure that the credentials are correct before trying to add the device okay so uh this is a wireless LAN controller i'm not going to provide uh ssh credentials 
neither uh, HTTPS. I'm just going to add by relying on SNMP credentials. Okay, and the wireless LAN controller was successfully added and we can manage a router, a switch, a wireless LAN controller. If we wanted, we could add a firewall and all of these being managed just by Cisco Prime infrastructure. Okay, we can use Cisco Prime as an inventory to keep track of the network device in the network. But there are other cool things that we can do as well. So for instance, we can keep track of the changes that are being performed on the network devices. And let me show you right now. So if we go to navigation, uh, let's see, inventory, uh, configuration archive. Uh, let's take a look at CSR. And so I have already enabled these to perform some uh, backups from the network device. And we can set this to do on a regular basis, for instance, every Monday or every day at a specific time. And let's take a look. So this is the running configuration on the equipment. And you can take a look at, at it. Uh, so that's the row configuration. Or you can look by sections. So for instance, if I take a look at the interface, what do I have enabled on interface gig one, gig two, gig three, and gig four. Or I can also uh, compare the running configuration with the previous one. So if we go to previous one and I just want to see the difference and it's going to show me, look, this was added or deleted and before it didn't have anything on these interfaces uh, related to this command or this configuration. So this is very helpful in environments where you have different network admins managing the same network device. So it allows you to identify which changes were performed and most important, who did those changes. OK, so let's close this one. OK, we can also have information about the network device health. So let's go to navigation, monitor network devices. And I want to take a look at the router again. So I can have some details as the device type, the IP address, is it reachable or not, the serial number, the product, uh, the CPU utilization, so the memory and also the interfaces. So let's expand these all interfaces, which interfaces are enabled or not. Uh, we can also have some tabs here that with different information related to ACL. So different components, uh, let's see, application visibility and control. If I expand these, okay. And so is it enabled? Yes, it is operational status. Okay. And I can see, okay, how, which type of application are passing through the interface. And you can see here, I have SSH, ICMP, SNMP, NetBIOS, and also the top clients that are closed or passing through this uh, this interface. And you can see 43107, 212, 140, 43.1, the number of clients over time. So all of these can be customized. And this is very helpful because it allows you to identify uh, different types of application that are being used on your network. So for instance, torrent or other type of application that shouldn't be allowed on your network and you'll be able to identify those. So let's see, what else do we have here? Application, I should say the same thing. So clients, the top clients, uh, top servers and application traffic analysis. And what else? What else? So let's take a look at the device. So let's take a look at the wireless LAN controller for a minute. And if we go to uh, inventory, network devices, uh, virtual wireless LAN controller. Okay, we have some information also about the wireless LAN controller. And also we should see something here related to access points that are being managed by these uh, controller. And we have one AP here. Okay, let's go to dashboard. Should have some more detailed information here. Okay, we also have the network topology. So for instance, let's take a look at it. Uh, we're able to uh, organize the devices into different uh, groups, into different locations. In case you're troubleshooting a problem on your network and you need to take a look at the logs from different network devices at the same time. It can be very challenging, especially if you have to log into one device and then open another console. It's a mess. I know, trust me. 
With Cisco Prime, what you can do is just navigate to Monitor, uh, Syslog Viewer, and should go to Historic. And you can have all of these logs that are being sent from the network devices on this single page. Trust me, this is very powerful. Because here you can organize, for instance, by severity. You can organize by IP address, filter or sort, uh, by device name, by the message, uh, the timestamp, what time, uh, which one is the most recent one, uh, the facility, mnemonics. Okay, all of these it's customizable. Now let's take a look at the configuration that you have to do on the network devices. As you can see, this is my basic topology. So let's take a look at the router config. Okay, so that should be SNMP. So a couple of things that we have to enable is the SNMP settings. So I enabled uh, two SNMP communities, uh, the read and the write community so that uh, Cisco Prime is able to collect information from the network device and also enabled uh, SNMP traps uh, and SNMP uh, informs. Okay, so as you can see in the end, I set the Cisco Prime as the SNMP server uh, to get this information from the network device. Okay. And also I enabled, uh, let's take a look at flow. So I enabled NetFlow uh, to send also this information collected from the router to be sent to SNMP, uh, not to SNMP, to Cisco Prime infrastructure. And I also enabled, uh, let's take a look at G00. Actually, that should be G1. Okay. So I enabled IP and bar protocol discovery so that uh, the router is able to identify the different types of application and pass this information to Cisco Prime. And essentially, this is the same on the switch. Okay, so we should have a similar configuration. So if I take a look at SNMP and I also uh, enabled uh, SSH. So I'm going to share this configuration on the video description. So again, I enabled the SNMP community, set the trap source to be the uh, interface on the switch that is going to be used to send the traps to uh, Cisco Prime infrastructure. And essentially the configuration is the same. Now on wireless LAN controller, if we go to advanced and let's go to management, SNMP, uh, communities. So here we have to set the community and this community name we have to match also on Cisco Prime infrastructure. So if I open this one, you see it has Cisco Prime IP address and mask and you have to set this to be enabled. As you can see, Cisco Prime is an easy tool to get started to use. And if you think from a compatibility perspective, you're less likely to have compatibility issues by managing uh, Cisco devices because Cisco Prime is from Cisco to manage Cisco device wouldn't make sense, right? Now, if you want to take a look at different uh, network monitoring uh, solutions, uh, I did a uh, video some time ago and I'm going to leave right here on the video description. And if you found this video useful, helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.